Well, hello YouTube, it's me, Fortmaster, and yeah, welcome back to another Overly Sarcastic Productions reaction. Now, before you say anything, yes, I know about this. I tried to get one more use out of my razor before having to change it, and I probably shouldn't have. Anyway, history summarized, the birth of Rome. Yeah, so I don't actually know that much about the, I guess, the, the history of Rome as a city. I mean, I know that it was built, was it around... On it was on, built on seven hills, and apparently, like the founder, uh, him and his brother were you know raised by wolves, so at least that's how the myth goes. Uh, so I'm actually pretty excited to, to learn you know what we actually do know of the actual uh, you know founding of Rome itself because I know before it became a republic, it was a kingdom. But then they overthrew the king, it was a republic for several hundred years, and then the republic fell and it became the empire, so... <sighs> C'est la vie. So yeah, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will be leading to my Let's Play of the Day, and with all that out of the way, let's get this thing started then, shall we? Rome was not built in a day. No, it was not. it was built, consciously and with intentionality. Roman civil... No, it's like an SCP. Rome just appeared out of the ether. Civilization as we understand it is the product of millions of people, men and women, young and old, weak and powerful, working over millennia to make their culture something spectacular. We can see that they built and accomplished amazing things across three continents, but what's less obvious is what they built on. Not literally, mind you, that's usually brick or stone, but what cultural foundation sustains so huge an idea as Rome? That's the kind of question that takes us to the very beginnings of their history as we try to figure out what inciting incident led to all of this. However, any records from the earliest Roman chronicles are agonizingly absent as the city was sacked and burned in 390 by a tribe of Gauls. Yeah, that's not really something I thought about. Uh, and yeah, for such an ancient city, you would expect there to be uh, some things lost in the various number of scuffles that happened in it. So we are instead left at the mercy of Roman legend, completely ahistorical Ooh. and hella propaganda. But despite yeah. this rather considerable setback in understanding the earliest roots of Roman history, we can work with this. Because later Romans also didn't know where exactly they came from, and were voraciously curious to fix that. So lacking okay, a well, that's good. answer, they instead concocted one, consciously and intentionally compiling a narrative out of half-remembered myths and historical foreshadowing of okay. the they knew. This web of folktales retold and refined by centuries of storytellers until their codification around the turn of the millennium is our best source of cultural intent and ambition for the Rome that was to be. So, mm. to untangle this Roman creation myth and better understand the underlying roots of Rome, let's do some history. history. If we take the Romans at their word, their origins go with thusly. 1100 something or other BC, Troy's on fire and one lucky prince Aeneas escaped. He made his way to Italy with interruptions and one mm. kinship of the plain of Latium, but it's not Rome time quite yet. His descendants ruled in Alba Longa, a short way south of the Tiber River for four centuries until the Alban king Numitor got deposed by his brother Amulius, who made Numitor's daughter Rhea Silvia a Vestal Virgin to ensure the bloodline ends with her. Trying to trying to remember my ages here, but I I know that no, yeah, Troy was a Bronze Age city. Rome was very much classical. So four centuries. Yeah, that makes yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, that makes sense. This was always a failing strategy when Olympians were afoot, and uh, sure enough, the war god Mars slid in to give her twin sons Romulus and Remus. Amulius demanded they be killed river style, but they were saved at the banks of the Tiber by a she wolf who they like Moses. Their early childhood before they were taken in by shepherds, bringing the twins' parent count to one dad, two moms, one god, and a wolf. They grew Meh. up and deposed that nasty, awful Amulius, and later set about founding a new settlement along the Tiber. A brotherly quarrel escalated as they were plotting out the course of their new walls and Romulus killed Remus in the first but distinctly not last Roman on Roman violence. No, okay. This is why it's called Rome and not Reem. With his The Great Civilization of Reem kingship secure and the city founded in the year 753, Romulus got to populating his new town, so he welcomed bandits, exiles, and other such ruffians, and then captured the Sabine women en masse to ensure Rome would have heirs. Unlike Rhea Silvia, okay. we can't all be slammed by the god of war, but the Romans sure learned from his example. Romulus also implemented several core features of Roman society. The tribes, patrician and plebeian classes, marriage laws, the patron-client system, even the senate arose as if springing fully formed from the head of Romulus. After him, six 
Yeah, I have a feeling that was one of those parts that they, uh, part that's firmly in the legend category. Six more kings ruled over Rome, the last three of whom were from the Etruscan Tarquinii clan, and the very last was Tarquinius Superbus, aka Darky Tark Superbus, who was a total what? knob. His incessant assholery enraged the Romans into throwing their very first coup d'etat, very exciting, ousting <laughs> Tarquin and establishing Rome as a republic in 509 BC. From there, the Italian peninsula was destined to one day fall under the stunning force of Rome's military and kick-ass civic institutions, and the whole Mediterranean would undoubtedly be next. This origin right. story is dignified, tidy, a little self-indulgent, but above of all course else, it is. convenient. So let's go through this and, you know, rip it apart. Exactly. Off, Rome's founding date of 753 is a guess, posited in the first century BC to roughly line up with the earliest Greek Olympics. As far as the story itself goes, the Italy-bound journey of Aeneas, the perfect Roman OC, do not steal, is <laughs> suspiciously Odyssean enough as is, but it's first attested by Greek sources during the Republic. Aeneas is also way back in the Bronze Age compared to 753. That hefty four-century gap between Aeneas and Romulus went largely unexplained until Dionysus of Halicarnassus seemingly invented invented the entire concept of the Alban kings in his Roman antiquities from the first century BC. Okay. So, yeah, again, just four centuries of nothing before something big happens, of course, yes. The of Alba Longa have very little characterization, and some can be mapped onto nearby Latium place names, so it's not a stretch to think Dionysius decided that hill over there is totally derived from this ancient king, you guys. Right, I okay. I promise. Please, please don't investigate it. It's only when we run into the twins' backstory that the Alban kings Numitor and Amulius actually do anything. The boy's story is overtly mythical, and even Livy questions Mars and the wolf, but what might be less believable than divine parentage is the idea that seven kings ruled Rome for a combined 244 years, which requires an unbroken string of seven 35-year reigns on average. That is a royal runtime matched by only two emperors before the fall of Western Rome. And yes, that of all things is where I draw the realism hmm. but granted i think okay okay on again 35 years average though i think my perspective on that might be a little skewed given that i'm generally really good at getting my uh monarchs um in like crusader kings to like rule for long periods of time unless uh, i switch them when they're already really old because then they just usually die <laughs> line because each segment of the story feels abundantly retrofitted to clean up a messy set of chronologies between key events the well-known establishment of the republic in 509 the vaguely understood foundation of the city in the mid 700s okay and the heavily mythologized trojan origins of aeneas back in the Bronze 15 Age. other kings Everything sure okay is just narrative scaffolding Republican era Romans wondered aloud how exactly their history could fit two founders in the same folk tradition, and it took until the Augustan period to square all that by having Aeneas found the Roman dynasty and Romulus build the city itself. Other classical states didn't struggle okay. as much with contradicting narratives. Athens certainly didn't mind having multiple founder heroes, and one of them was Theseus. Yeah. yeah. But in the first century BC, Rome took an organic storytelling tradition and forced all those disparate threads to play by history's rules one continuous narrative. It didn't need to be what we would call factual, it just needed to fit. Of course the Alban kings were retconned into existence to tidy up the timeline. Aeneas and Romulus are the only two who narratively matter. Rome's legendary <laughs> origins only needed to make sense to the Romans, and in the absence of records from before Rome's first sack in 390 BC, that's the closest thing to a primary source we have. As pure history, it's bound to leave us wanting anything more substantive, but as an artifact of their culture, this origin tells us everything the Romans needed to know about themselves and wanted anyone else to know. Their heroes are divine descendants of Venus and Mars, their lineage runs back as far as anywhere in Greece. They come from <laughs> anywhere in Greece. Backgrounds. Civil war is in their blood. They 100% have a wolf kink. And Good thing they didn't use the wolf kinks on you, though. And they kill tyrants. That's Rome. Everything else is Livy's filler arcs. Now, for a supposedly oh my ancient God. story, two of Romulus' deeds point decidedly forwards in Roman history and reveal what later Romans thought must have been intrinsic to their identity. His first act as king was to welcome Italy's dispossessed and outlaws as Rome's citizens, which may seem rather unheroic on the face of it, but this reflects Rome's most peculiar trait, its openness to cultures and people. Rome, of course, thought that it was the best civilization ever and made that known loudly and frequently, but Rome took good ideas 
Romanas wherever they found them, and was willing to let any barbarian become Roman so long as they took on Rome's customs and learned Latin. Romans always started as outsiders, be they exiles from across Italy or refugees from far off Troy. <laughs> Romans always accepted outsiders, including if they were the Romans themselves. <laughs> Supposedly. Rome was also remarkably yeah. comfortable with granting citizenship to freed slaves, a quality the Greeks absolutely did not share. Oh. The seemingly undignified story actually enshrines the idea that regardless of social class or cultural boundaries, it was possible to become a Roman. And that idea is the stuff that pan-Mediterranean civilizations are made of. But alongside Rome's great aspirations, their deepest anxiety is also present in the Romulus story, as their ruinously blood-soaked hobby of civil wars finds its start in that fratricidal founder. Rather yeah. than intended as justification to go out murdering as if they needed that, this looks like the closest thing to Rome's original sin, the foundational crime they will be doomed to repeat over and over and over and over and over for more than 2,000 years. Oh my god. How many civil wars did Rome have again? I gotta look this up. I've, for I've completely forgotten. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, oh, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I mean, even, even like counting that, I may have done the counting like completely wrong by just looking for the word civil war. Oh, that's a lot of them. <laughs> These stories take their most permanent form seven centuries after the supposed founding of the city in the pages of Livy's History of Rome and Virgil's Aeneid. And as we wait for potential discoveries in archaeology to illuminate the earliest settlements amid those hills beside the Tiber, that's all we've got to go on. The image sharpens into historical focus as we depose King Tarquin, start the Republic, and embark on the slow process of building Rome's civic institutions and establishing a domain across central Italy, but the further we progress along the timeline, the more meaningful and relevant their origin story becomes. The roots of Rome ultimately tell us nothing about the earliest Romans, if they even called themselves Romans, <laughs> even came from Troy, even had kings, even did any of the things their myths take for granted. But this narrative reveals so much about the civilization they would become and the kind of people the Romans would one day be. Crafty bastards. As the next 2,000 <laughs> years will amply demonstrate, they were crafty bastards. Thank you for watching. Hope yeah, crafty bastards. Yeah, that, that that definitely describes the Romans, right? Yes. <laughs> so, um, I understood that the whole wolf thing was definitely, you know, in the mythical section, but I again, I didn't know that they they the Romans themselves didn't know their own history that well. Jeez, you think about it, that's kind of sad. I mean, granted, you don't expect like the the everyday citizen to know like every minute detail of of the history of their country. But to the fact that, like, nobody knows it because it was all lost, I mean, oh, that's just sad. It sucks. But yeah, so, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it yet for some reason. Corner video will be leading to my Let's Play of the Day. And with all that out of the way, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you have not. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.